We are in southwest Missouri today, but it doesn't look much like the Ozarks. We're right on the edge of the plateau. I'm here with Naaman. Naaman, thanks for having us over. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, Naaman's a fellow hunter, but what Naaman's really famous for is giant crops of corn. Isn't that true, Naaman? Ah, uh, we do raise some good crops around here. We try to. Yeah. And we're in an area that's not really known. People are thinking Iowa, Ohio, Illinois. And you're pulling this off in southwest Missouri. So I want to have Naaman take some time with my good friend Chris Masters and talk about the cycles they've been through, some techniques they used in the past to get record book quality corn and how they've kind of changed through time, learned some lessons and what they're doing now because at the end of the day, this relates to how you can have better food plots and better deer. Hey Chris, thanks for joining us today. Y'all sure. are used to seeing Chris at the Proving Grounds. Chris, there's some real dirt here. I bet you like this a lot better. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more depth to it, that's for sure. Yeah. So I met Chris a couple years ago, we've shared your four and pretty much blew him off, treated him bad to be honest, I'm ashamed of myself, because Chris was introducing me to soil microbes we could apply in a liquid form. Sure. Tell us a little bit how, just briefly, how you got started down that road, Chris. Pretty much this is, you know, going on roughly about two decades worth of research and, and technology, but uh, we wanted to find out what were the most beneficial microbes in the soil how were they were functioning in the soil, and then how could we relate that to uh, farmers, growers, and yeah. now into food plotters? Yeah, and just a quick summary here, I'm not gonna bore you with all the science, but God did not build plants to take synthetic N, P, and K in. That's something that come about actually in the 40s and 50s, right after World War II. The cycle really should be that there's nutrients in the soil everywhere. I just list some great research from Understanding Ag. They've taken 1,100 really detailed soil tests, Haney tests, stuff like that, throughout America, 1,100 different farms. That's a big sample size. Oh, yeah. And not a single farm did not have adequate nutrients for great crops. Yep. But those nutrients were not available to the plants. They were in a form that's not available to the plants. That's where microbes come in. Exactly. Yeah. So Chris got me going on this. He got Naaman going on this a while back, and I'm going to step out and let these guys tell the story. So Naaman, we're here in Southwest Missouri, your hometown, your area around here. And we've been working together for uh, about three years. Previous to working with you directly was your father, Kip Kohlers. And uh, Kip has left quite the legacy, I think, in the uh, farming community. And here you are coming up of age and taking over and doing more of the, the duties. Tell us a little bit about kind of your mindset. And you've been, had this tradition of, of growing high productive crops, whether that's soybeans and or corn, but tell us a little bit what's been your uh, drive to, to uh, pushing yields. Well, I've been around it my whole life, you know, grew up, I was dad's first year, I think I was born when he had a first win. So I've been all around high yield stuff, you know, it's all I've ever really known, kind of filling the shoes, you know, trying to walk in his footsteps, kind of see if I can push the high yields too. So we're just kind of seeing what we can push out of this corn now. So pushing it, you've been at this regiment really about three years. We've been working together three years. Tell us a little bit of the history, even in the, the young three years that we've been working with, what are some yields you've been able to achieve on corn? So my first year, we did a 363 bushel yield. We had a third place national win. Last year we did a 363, I think had a second place national win. So we're pushing the boat hard again this year. We're gonna see if we can do, you know, four. Haven't had the great timing with all of our applications, been a little wet in our area, but you know, we can't complain with what we got. So we're pretty proud of what we got and happy, so. So you guys have had record rainfall in this area. Uh, with that being said, uh, we've walked some fields, we've taken tissue samples. We've been able to gauge the growth of the crop. Even at your plant population, you're seeing double ears, yep. second ears. I think that's gonna be the leverage to get you potentially over that 400 bushel mark. But for the viewers, they may not understand what 363 bushels is. But I think last year, the, the national average was around uh, 167 to 170 bushels. So for in order for you to achieve nearly double uh, to almost triple the yield, there has to be some science that goes into achieving those type of yields. How have you been able to achieve those type of yields compared to p potentially what previous generations have been doing or let's just say the neighbor down the road? You know, across the board, we always have been a little above average. We, we try to shoot for 200 bushel dry land corn or irrigated. You know, we shoot for the high twos, even touching three. 
we're getting these high yields is from all this the biologicals we're using you know we're doing the science on it it's not all just pump fertilizer to it or pumping the chicken litter to it you know yeah we still use fertilizer we still use chicken litter but how we're getting up to these really top end is all in the science we're doing the biologicals taking samples soil samples i mean you can't plant a cornfield and just walk away from it you know you got to walk out there you got to see it you know humans don't eat once a year you know you can't just plant a cornfield go out there and say all right i'll see you in 115 days whatever length your variety is you got to be out there you got to be proactive you know sending pictures off to people and you got to be willing to learn you got to put the work in so it's just all you got to you got to work for it. you can't just plan it and forget about it so one of the important things that you said is you can't just plan it and forget about it when we look at those that are going to view this video we're looking at spring plots fall plots we can't just give up on something. And I think one of the biggest things in your three years is building each year like a building block. How do you think your soils have been responding and the plants have been responding to the fact that you've been on a regiment, you've been methodical? What, do you, what can you say to that? Well, I can tell you this. So last year, the field we had our uh, NCGA plot in, we did all the biologicals, our wheat was doing substantially better in that square of where we had that plot. All the biologicals still in the dirt, that wheat yielded better than the rest of the field did. So it carries over throughout the year. It's not a once and done. You can apply it and you're going to keep building your soil uh, profile up. Excellent. And that, that's what it's about. It's about taking what we're going to do in 25 build into the spring of 26, build into the fall of 26, and then we look at, again, legacy, we look at who's coming behind us, the, the, the younger hunters, the, the younger that's gonna take over and we're gonna hand the baton off. We wanna know that the soil is better than we found it, right? Yep. So you're, you're a testament to that. Uh, again, you, you've had a, a history of being in the, the high yields. Now you're starting to learn that potentially, maybe how we were doing it before was not the way that we need to do it now. And biology, microbiology, soil health is driving that to be able to achieve these type of yields. We're excited to see how that's gonna continue for you. So Naaman, when we think about crop quality, this can apply to anybody who has any type of food plot. How is your system and, and the biology that we're working with, how has it been differing and benefiting you? You can get a little bit more ROI out of it instead of using a bunch of commercial fertilizer out there. You know, you can save some money without not buying, applying a bunch of urea or ammonia nitrate or anything like that. You can go out there, apply this biology, and you can see a savings from it, and you can see future benefit from it. It's not just a once and done like fertilizer. Or, you know, you can, you can keep building on it, and in turn, you're saving money. I mean, this stuff, it's natural, it's safe. You know, I don't wear any protective gear when I'm touching it. I can get it on my skin. You know, you just go home, wash it off, it don't smell the greatest sometimes, but you know, that's all part of it. You gotta get a little dirty with it, but it's not gonna hurt you, it's safe. So take what you want, take that information. So Naaman, to add to that is the fact that if it's safe for you to apply and it's safe for to put on to the forages that we're growing, safe for the deer to eat, look for the consumer as well, for us at the table consuming that. So we talk about nutrition starting in the soil, ends up getting to the plant, the plant gets to end up getting consumed by the deer, then we, the consumer, consume the deer. This is just a continual linkage that keeps quality going through, driving at the soil, then now us as consumers. So again, there's a lot of benefits to that. You know, Naaman, we drew up a very specialized plan so that way you could try to get the top end of whatever this variety is gonna give you. And I think for those that are watching as well, they're trying to see how they can maximize that acre, half acre. And that's the beautiful thing about Soil Pro is the products are designed to cover the basis of what you're looking for. Emergence, stand, quality, tonnage, biomass. That at the end of the day for you guys watching this is gonna be what Soil Pro is here to assist and here to help with. And that's the bulk of our products and our system to be able to cover and deliver for you. It's one thing we try to, you know, fight against is big changes in, in weather, right? Yeah. The environment, and that's, I call them disruptors. Tillage, pesticides, and then big weather changes. And that's where microbes give us all, no matter what we're trying to grow, give us the ability to combat and fight that. And I think that goes to what you're seeing here this year for you is the microbes came into play, help you fight some of this stress, 
even though we don't think water is a stress, but too it much of, be. right? Too much of something is a bad thing. And I think that's where you've been able to combat this with the microbe use. And, you know, we're getting good ear placement. Um, the starches, heavy starches. See like this, I mean, we're not done filling out, but having, you know, two ears basically on one stalk, gonna be able to produce. This is where you're gonna get your tonnage. Hopefully get, you know, another, what would be record for you. We still got a, a, a decent ways to go to fill this out, um, but it's gonna be exciting, right? Yeah, I'm hoping we can hit 400, you know. It's all against mother nature now, seeing if we can, we got some extreme heat coming in, so we have to keep it watered, keep it cool, so we don't, corn plant don't get too stressed out, so. We want to be better than we were last year. Yeah, that's all. Right? We, that's what we try. That's what we shoot for. Yep. And we got to pivot. We got to, you know, take the hits as they come. Mother Nature comes, but we pivot from that, and that's where we have the flexibility of not being so rigid. And I think that's what fertilizer systems are, right? We get a a soil sample or report, and we just then begin to regimentally stick to that rigid format. And the plants having so many different variables play, and that's where the the microbes work with that, right? And so. You've been able to adjust and pivot off of that. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome harvest. I think it's gonna be an awesome yield. Yep. That's what we're hoping for. Naaman, man, I gotta tell you, I'm envious. This looks awesome, but you're a big time producer. I'm a food plot guy and my buddies are food plot guys. So I've learned a lot from you already. I hope I get to learn more. You're welcome, Corn Branson. Just don't laugh at us, okay? <laughs> and uh, But for me, Chris, we had summer crops, tons of rain, but we're gonna do it again in the fall. And the folks, We've hired a local drone contractor to apply some. We can apply with the tractor, but in our high deal food plots, we got our backpack sprayer out there applying it because this is all natural. Like Naaman said, you're not worried about getting that wind drift. I mean, no one makes up in the morning and goes, man, I can't wait to get some of that glyphosate hit me in the face again. So <laughs> this is all natural. It's no big deal. Put it on your garden, whatever. But for me at the end of the day, I want better food plots, better growing crops, of course, out compete weeds or help out compete weeds. And those old nanny does take a lot of groceries to make healthy fawns and healthy fawns turn into big bucks if you let them live old enough. So for me, this is a natural fit. It's so much easier than trying to spread fertilizer on something. You can put you know, a couple gallons in your steel backpack sprayer, yeah. cover that hide hole and you're done. We haven't used any commercial fertilizer. I probably lost track, but like in 10 years now. And our crops have got going down. We got, Chris got a hold of us and microbes again are that cycle. God gives us the sun that's free every day. That's the energy that drives the whole system. Without sunshine, this doesn't work at all, folks. There's plenty of nutrients in the soil for most food plots, but to get in a plant, they gotta go through a, a, a microbe, just a bacteria, something's gut, and it goes in the plant. The cycle's real simple. The plant is making carbon. This corn is just sucking carbon out of air right now, pumping it in the soil, but the microbes living down there in the dark, they don't get any carbon. They gotta have carbon. You're 70% carbon, you're 70% carbon. That big buck was 70% carbon before it went in your belly. So they're all starved for carbon. And the microbe says to the plant, I am starved for carbon. I'll give you NPK, whatever you need, if you give me carbon. But you gotta have the microbes to do that. And that's where Chris has come up with the system to help us food potters. And we're gonna be applying this to our own plots here about mid-August or so, so stay tuned. Chris, you've really helped me and now I want you to be able to help a lot of food plot guys so they can find you on your website, which is? Soilprooutdoors.com. Soilproououtdoors.com. And we're a couple years into it now. I've been super pleased. Naaman is a, you know, a champion corn grower. He's pleased. You want to hop on this bandwagon for your own food plots. So there's a lot to learn here. And as we learn these natural cycles, to me, that just brings us back to the creator. And the creator has a plan for all of us, just like he did the soil and the buffalo and building those tremendous soils in the Great Prairie. And to find that plan, it's as easy as getting in his word and applying it to our lives daily. Thanks for watching. Growing Deer.